Good morning to you. Pleasure to have you join us for another look at the headlines making the rounds on our newspapers across the country. My name is Felicity Eziwike and I have joining me to review the papers this morning. Um, Aisha Yusufu, the co-convener, bring back our girls group. Thank you very much for joining us, Aisha. Thank you so much for having me, Felicity. Thank you. I trust you're doing okay and keeping safe. Yes, I'm doing great, and I hope you are too. I am. Thank you for asking. All right, we'll start with the Nation newspaper this morning and take a look at the big one. APC consultations begin as leaders meet Tinubu Akonde. Uh, that's it on your screen. All the men trying to show safe... Um, I mean, following the guidelines for protection against COVID-19, or with the exception of one, of course, uh, we have the picture there for you. APC consultations begin as leaders meet Tinubu Akonde. Uh, on the right side of the paper, of that picture, you, uh, what you're looking at is the Niger State Governor and um, others on it. Adult 2020, or Shamale Oyegu in Ganduje led campaign team. INEC displays Obasaki's, Ize Yamu's, others' forms. Edo cancels victimizing officials for refusing to join PDP. That's an allegation on the front page. Um, which other one should I grab quickly? Uh, UAE police extradite hush puppy to the US. And then we have um, Ondo Health Commissioner Dyes, Kogi Agency Chief Gunn. Brace for rise in virus cases. Brace for rise in virus cases. Minister alerts Nigerians infected youth spreading COVID-19, says NCDC. I think we should start from that before we go to the APC consultations. Um, what's your thinking on the rising cases and the allegation that it's coming majorly from um, infected youth by the minister? Uh, uh, so for me, uh, I'm just thinking, how did they know that it's infected youths that are spreading uh, the virus? I do understand the fact that when they say we should brace ourselves for increasing virus, yes, because at this moment, you see a lot of people are not taking uh, uh, the kind of measures they're supposed to take to prevent this, most especially our leaders. So I'm surprised how we're talking about infect, uh, infected youth here. When we have our politicians, our leaders, people in offices, you know, just uh, going about recklessly and probably spreading this disease. I think it's uh, which of this governor is he on those state governor? Akero, Akero do. I, I hope okay. I got that right. Um, that, Ondo is, uh, I think it's Ganduje. No, no, no. I'm talking of the one that, that tested positive to COVID 19. Okay, it's Akero Dalu. You are correct. You are correct. I was thinking Akero of uh, the lockdown easing. No, 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 not the lockdown easy. The fact that he was, re I think there was, I saw a report where they said he was recently in a particular gallery uh, where he sneezed or something like that, and then he tested positive as well. So our politicians, our leaders, governors and everything, they're going about their business recklessly. They're not using the protection. They are mixing up. You saw Obaseki when he went to uh, PDP. You saw when he went to collect his form, when he went to do whatever it is they did in those states. There was no, it wasn't even masks. People were together. There was no social distancing. So how did we come and we're saying that it's the youth? Is it because it's easier to blame the youth than for the minister to have the guts to be able to call every one of these governors? I, 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 I signed I, aside the blame game, Aisha, what, what do you, what, what worries you the most about the rising number of infection we have across the country? Because it seems to be rising at an astronomical um, level. We're over the 20,000 mark today. You know, for me, when I see the non figures that we have in my head, you know what I do, I multiply by a hundred. The thing is that we are not taking it seriously. Many people still believe that this virus, it's, it's, it's not... You, you, you get what the Kogi State, State Governor said in the other headline we did, I think that was one of the that it's a hoax, that it's not true. So a lot of people have this mentality, and we are not doing the need to. You know, it, when it comes to compliance and guidelines for following things, in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, Nigerians are very good, they, they follow the rules, right? But in Nigeria, they always feel they can get the world because that's the atmosphere we've been uh, conditioned to believe that anything is not Nigeria. But with this disease, it's not like that. 
Compliance is key. And as long as we are not complying, we are setting up ourselves to, to, to fail. We are setting up ourselves for death. We are setting up ourselves for this virus to keep increasing. And that would be very unfortunate because we don't even have the healthcare system to be able to tackle this. If we have a full-blown uh, 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 pandemic taking over the nation. Quite unfortunate, really. Um, let's talk a bit of politics, because in spite of the concerns over COVID-19, politics is playing out. Um, APC consultations begin as leaders meet at Chinubu Akonde. Chinubu is saying there is, uh, there is, I mean, there is no rift and everything is all right. Um, and uh, the party should go on with uh, trying to organize a convention and uh, win elections. What's your thinking um, in all of this? My thinking is that why are we distracted by the shenanigans that are going on in APC? The country, we have issues. We have a pandemic. We have hunger in the country. We have economic downtown, down, downtown. We have, we have so many things going wrong with, uh, in the nation. And yet the focus, you see the headlines. The main news is about APC. It's about election in a do state. It's about this election mode, election mode. And this is what our political parties do all the time. When they get into government, they focus on the election mode. They're always in election mode and never get into governance mode. At this moment, we, we, we should be talking about Tinipu, whatever, however. It should be talking about, we should be talking about Nigeria. We should be talking about businesses that are going down. I think there's particular businesses, the OP, that have had to suspend some of their services. People are going to lose jobs. People are losing jobs. Businesses are folding up. This is where our energy should be as a nation, thinking of how do we carry all of this along, rather than focusing on some politicians who are behaving childishly. Yeah, well, we, we can get away from politics now, can we? In everything, including the management of these funds that we're getting for uh, the COVID-19 management, uh, no, it's still... We need to get into governance. That's the thing, Felicity. We are not getting into governance. We are in election mode. You understand? It's always election we are up. Governance is the main key thing. And we are not doing, we are not focused on governance. We are focused on other things. Is this the time for them to be fighting and then we, uh, uh, the whole nation's attention and the, the whole party's attention that should be focused on the nation is focused on settling uh, adults? All right, now let's take this quick one quickly before we move on to other papers. Uh, the hush puppy situation. The headline says, UAE please extradite hush puppy uh, to the U.S. What, what are your expectations uh, from this? Will he be prosecuted and do you see a guilty verdict? You know, some people Martin, are still actually holding out that the, uh, the guy is um, innocent, really. Well, for me, one of the things I know from watching quite a number of crime investigation and everything is that the, the authorities, security authorities, in, uh, uh, the enforcement authorities and security agencies in the U.S., they do not just come and arrest somebody, just like we have in Nigeria. They can wake up. You know, in Nigeria, we have our, uh, our own enforcement agency. What they do is that they first of all arrest you, then they will begin to gather evidence. You understand? So at the end of the day, they go to court. They don't have enough. Over there, they ensure that they have enough evidence to prosecute you. Because the moment you're prosecuted on a particular thing, if they don't get the, the, the guilty verdict or whatever, they can come back on that same charge again. So they take their time, they take years. Sting operation, they, they take years to be able to gather all the evidence that they need. And I think that's what would have played out there. So hopefully they had done their, their business. Now, you know, the thing for me, it's not the fact that, oh, he's been, he has been expelled, he has died. He, did I get that it's a detail, it's a detail. Sorry, my pronunciation can be awful sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, he has been taken back to, to the US, right? But the most key thing for me is that before this guy was taken, had been declared a, a criminal, arrested by Dubai uh, police and everything, almost every of our politicians were with him, whining and dicing with him. The celebrities were with him, whining and di di dining with him, dancing with him, having fun with him. Most of, you know, you see pictures of him with all of this. What does he say? Is it now that we know that he's a criminal and the people yeah, that we're I mean, he's, to have he's yet to be part. proven guilty. I, I'm not yeah. jumping to their well, defense, but he's yet to be proven guilty. And associating Absolutely. with people shouldn't be um, construed. I mean, you could associate with somebody without knowing that this person has a criminal background. Very true. Absolutely so. It could be. But it's not, a, it's not one case. It's not two cases. We always see all of this is where our politicians, those in high rise, associate with certain people with questionable uh, characters and questionable interests. And then all of a sudden, when something happens, then they throw the person under the bus and then they begin to 
to form a righteousness. Yeah, he's not yet, he's not yet guilty. We can't, we can't call him a criminal. Absolutely agree with that. They have said the way you see people now, all of a sudden, from somebody who was all, all of everything, he was the hero. Now he's the, the brother that we need to, we need to have values as a nation. We need to begin to have value. That's the, that's the key thing we've been missing all this while. Where the, mo the moment you have money, nobody cares to bother about where do you get your money? But then, what am I saying? Our politicians, it's not the same. They get into office one day, but the next thing, they are stupendously rich, and everybody is falling over them. So, hey, it doesn't matter how you get the money. As long as let's, let's, money. Let's, 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 that's why we... That's why we have... That. We need to do that that, that's why we continue to have uh, such conversations. So we continue to drum on the need for, you know, embracing the right values. The Guardian newspaper is next for review this morning. And the big one there is um, 595.65 billion era lecky deep sea port courts trouble. It has um, some rider, how lack of rail link road threatens project success. Plan on the way to connect facility, government affirms. And then we have another one. Fix refineries, stakeholders challenge government. How new pump price worsens citizens' rules. PDP labor of this kick insist on total deregulation. FG refutes report on dirty fuel. High price chance to regain lost 10 billion naira equity, says marketers. Um, let's start with that one because uh, Nigerians are saying, well, what's going on? Can you take that again? Let me get the last then, one. I didn't get you. Fix refineries. Stakeholders challenge government. That's the big one. And then it has um, two, a couple of writers, not just two. How pump okay. price worsens citizens' woes. And then uh, it also says uh, PDP labor others kick insist on total deregulation. And then uh, there is another one that says the federal government is refuting dirty fuel. And uh, just uh, since I'm here, let me just continue. Uh, local airlines set for operations, markets new rates. Uh, we don't know Boko Haram sponsors, says Defense Headquarters. Uh, over to you now. Okay, uh, so in, in the issue of uh, fixed refineries, please, 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 who are these stakeholders? Can we tell government to just do away with these refineries? How much have we, how many billions were spent on Kaduna refinery and nothing was gotten out of it? I remember Obasanjo just before he left had sold Kaduna refinery to uh, Don Kote and a couple of others. If they were running it by now, you wouldn't expect that they would still be doing this plus. At least, at least we would have saved all of these billions that have been spent on it. It's so we should four one nine. I, for me, when I think about four one nine in Nigeria, I think about our our refineries, NMPs. Every time they come to tell us that they're going to fix the refineries and everything, it's not working. Even if they need to dash people, let them dash. Let them do away with it so that we are not even losing what we are losing uh, uh, right now. For me, that that's very key. And then this other issue of uh, uh, how to uh, the, the issue of price uh, pricing, the pump price that has been increased. I was surprised when they said they said they have uh, 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 they regulated it. They said they have no more subsidy, and then you're still fixing price. Where would you get the truth from this government? Why are they playing with people's intelligence? Can please, please, can subsidy be removed? Can subsidy be totally removed? For me, I've always been a champion of why are we subsidizing uh, luxury instead of subsidizing what what we create job. Diesel, diesel is not subsidized. And diesel is what you use for commercial purposes, big trucks, industries, factories, they use diesel. They are not subsidized. Petrol that you use for luxury cars, we subsidize them. Why are we still doing that? For me, one of the biggest the achievement that would have been of the last, uh, uh, during uh, Jonathan's era was the fact that subsidy was removed. Unfortunately, a lot of people didn't uh, find that they came on the street with the Occupy Nigeria and the whole thing was taken away. And today we are we are still here battling this. The issue of subsidy, we should do away with it completely. Right. We have an organization in Nigeria that its only job is to regulate pricing. How do we do that? And we are paying these people so much money just to regulate the, uh, the price of petrol. No, please, 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 we should call for government to just take his hand out, deregulate that sector, leave it in the hands of private sector, let them put in laws, let them tax them, and just ensure that the right thing is being done. And also this issue of dirty fuel that we are having, 
Well, it, it's just sad where we are. Should we even be uh, importing petroleum at this stage? What we are doing, well, whenever we, for every liter of petrol that we import, we are exporting jobs and importing uh, unemployment. All right, let's take on the Punch newspaper in the time we have left. Uh, if we can add some more, that's great. Uh, FG warns medical directors over rising deaths in hospitals. Treat emergency cases on stretches if there are no bed spaces, ministers tells CMDs. Coronavirus spreading faster than system can handle FG warns Nigerians. On the commissioner's dies, uh, Keradolu's wife aged test positive for COVID-19. Uh, we have other headlines. Ohaneza General Assembly sues CAC, demands 500 billion naira. Uh, that's um, over-registration. <laughs> um, we have Chinese couple lock up eight Nigerian employees for four months. Dubai hands over harsh people. We've taken that. Uh, passengers with cold malaria won't board. That's aero contractors. Man arrested for attacking Osho doctor patients, vandalizing hospital. Uh, yeah, the, there are other headlines as well. If you go to the top of the paper, we've taken the one on the caretaker committee, the APC meeting, Chinubu. Uh, there are others there. Patrol prize, NLC demands reversal. Uh, NECA backs FG. Um, I, want you to, I want you to start with this uh, registration because we actually have this conversation on PLUS Politics, um, or Hanese General Group, another group coming out uh, to say that they are the authentic or Hanese. And they are now suing ACC, A, um, CAC because CAC is said to have withdrawn uh, the certificate of registration that was given to them. Okay, so because I, I, I'm just hearing this for now, I really don't know oh. what the content okay. is. So I'm like, what was the whole uh, story? Uh, I really don't have enough knowledge to even about be able that. To okay, just, okay, pick on the one that you are more comfortable yeah. with right now. That you know that just gets out to you. Oh, okay. Uh, so for me, uh, two things. One, uh, the issue of FG wants medical uh, directors overriding them. Excuse me. What are the medical directors supposed to do? Are they the ones? You know, the FG should be to be ashamed of itself and should be should be apologizing to Nigerians for the fact that they didn't put all they needed to do in the healthcare system. For example, this government has been in government for, for five years. Not only has it been in government, it has had a president who has been sick for, 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 for months and had to stay in UK to assess their healthcare system, yet came back to Nigeria, did not declare an emergency in that healthcare system, did not say, oh, if the other Nigerians have the kind of disease I had that made me stay in UK, well, we, what will happen today? I'm revamp our health, healthcare system. And today we are where we are. And then they are blaming the medical directors so if you don't have a bed, treat people on stretchers. Is that how they treat people on stretchers when they travel abroad? You know, the other day I did it and I said, look, Today we have seen that, I said the rich also die. It is not, the rich and famous also die. Now all of a sudden this death, it's not only the poor people that are dying, it's not only ordinary, it's everybody is dying because we are now forced to access the same healthcare system that they refused to build in the first place. So why are they blaming the medical uh, uh, di directors? And so we've seen that it's not that they are more prayerful than the rest of us, but they, they are closer to God. It's just because they have the money to fly abroad and have access the best medical care. So this is the time for the FG to begin to think, how do we revamp this system? We are all in this together and they need to do the need to. The next thing that is jumping out at me, of course, is the Chinese uh, couple that held about eight Nigerians. Hello, in our own country, a couple held eight people. How did they even get the audacity? How did they even allow them? How were the people so meek and so docile that eight of them allowed a couple, two, two people, to come and to come and arrest them. And even when I saw this, 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 this couple, this Chinese couple, they had the audacity to still be talking. We've seen a lot of videos that have come in from China where Nigerians are being treated anyhow, black people are being treated anyhow. They are even they're refusing them to enter certain places and tell you that, oh, they have, they have this. And we come back home again. We are being treated like we, we mean like death in our own country. I mean, we need to begin to dignify the life of the Nigeria. Every Nigerian citizen, the government needs to do the needful with them, make an example of them, prosecute them for this uh, heinous crime that they committed. They had the audacity to commit in our own country. All right, do we this, see happening? 
Uh, I think we still have time to squeeze in one more paper. Uh, let's look at Business Day quickly. Uh, the big one here is Nigerian banks bleed amid world's highest cash reserves. Um, the, this central bank is headed the wrong way. That's an ex-deputy uh, governor of the CBN, I'm presuming. I'll take that again. Nigerian banks bleed amid world's highest cash reserves. This central bank is headed the wrong direction, and that's um, ex-deputy governor speaking. Uh, there are other stories as well. At the top of the paper, you're looking at it. Um, how gas firms, Imo government, exploit oil-producing communities. Ah, I remember having that conversation severally um, uh, on radio. It's still here with us years after. Um, how gas firms, Imo government, explore exploit oil producing communities. That's an investigation by this day, uh, uh, business day, I beg your pardon, newspaper. And just minute it where you have the graph, there is an inside story. Amid poor supply, Jenkos say 4,000 megawatts of power is rejected daily. Um, any of hmm. this catch your attention? Yeah, so quite, quite enough. Though I'm not an economist, I'm just a market woman, a microbiologist or market woman. So some of the things I might say, I might not be professional, know the right terms or whatever. But, you know, just looking at this, uh, this Nigerian ba banks need, I mean, what's highest cash reserve. The issue is that banks earn their money from what they are able to use, right? What they lend out and the interest that people pay. And if they are having such large cash reserve, get them, it doesn't make sense. I mean, having... The worst kind of investment is, is cash, just to have it lying down there and not any anything for you. It, and it, it's quite not the right way to go, especially with all this infl inflation and, and, and all of that. So I think there's a need to, to, to get and look into that uh, quite well. So I'm not an economist. I don't know how to explain it. I would explain it in the face wow. terms. You, 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 exactly. In order to how gas firm in most government express oil producing communities. Honestly, as a nation, every one of uh, every one of us, myself included, we should be ashamed of the way we actually treat the, uh, the oil uh, produ uh, producing communities. Honestly, they are not treated right. We, we exploit them. We take away their wealth. You go to these communities, you want to cry, you want to shed tears. I mean, it, 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 it's unbelievable. And these are people, this is where the wealth of the nation is coming out. And yet they are the ones who feel the wealth the least. Money gets to to, to, to to the region, to the states, and they, these communities are neglected and just left on their own. They are source of livelihood. They can't farm, they can't fish, they can't do a whole lot of things because their, their, their environment has been polluted. And one day when oil is no more in vogue, we're going to move on and leave them without devastation, without any compensation, development, and everything. We Quite need to do more with really. you. everyone we want. Aisha Yusufu, as always, it's a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Felicity. It's, all, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank be, you. Take care of yourself now. Be safe. You too. Thank you. All right, thank you. Bye. And that's how we wrap things up this morning, our newspaper review. We call the program off the press. It returns Monday morning. Uh, it's a Friday today, so this is the last edition for this week. We're back again next week. My name is Felicity Ezewike, wishing you a very lovely day.